Are you ready, uh, Judge Mayor? Thank you, Deputy Chief Justice. Yes, I'm ready. Good, good evening. Are you well? I'm well, thank you. Good. Uh, you have been interviewed by the JSC for a vacancy in the Supreme Court of Appeal previously, not so? I beg your pardon. The, uh, <coughs> the, the JSC the, has previously interviewed you yes. for a I've, position in the SA. Yes, I've been interviewed. I think this is my fourth time. <laughs> Yeah, and on each of those occasions, you did very well. Thank you, Deputy yes. Chief Justice. Look, your, your last interview is the one that was conducted in 2019, am I right? Yeah, that was the last okay. one. Okay, and we have the record right here. Yes. Uh, your record speaks for itself. You're a seasoned judge. You've produced many judgments. You've acted many times at, 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 at the SCA, and I think we know what the issue is. Yes. You just competed uh, at a time when the demographics just, just, just didn't favor you. Absolutely, the color of your skin. and I so I understood it always. Yes, Deputy Chief Justice. Yeah. So, in addition to what you've told the the JSC previously, what 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 do you have that's new now? Why 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 should the JSC recommend you for 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 appointment, Deputy Just <coughs> Chief Justice? In brief, everything is in the documents, also the um, comments received by all the different legal bodies. But I've been a judge of the High Court. Well, I've been an advocate for 21 years. I was a senior counsel for three years. I am a judge of the High Court for 15 years. In fact, on the 15th of June, my 15-year gratuity paid out. And I've written, I've been in the SEA altogether two and a half years. I'm considered to be an experienced judge. Apart from Acting President Petsy and Justice Ponnen, all the other judges in the SEA um, were appointed ever since I started to act in the SCA since 2013. And amongst us acting judges in the SCA, there is a special bond. And I've also seen now over the last three terms that I've acted in the SCA, um, that that indeed is a close bond I've written many, many, many judgments. I am very experienced. I'm meticulous in the judges. Judgments are right. I always write also for the litigants to understand my judgments. Um, in a nutshell, yes, I do believe that I have contributed already in the ECA and that I will contribute in future. Many of the lesser experienced judges seek my advice all the time, and I love to give it. Um, <clears throat> and also, you've changed the SEA tremendously. The last three terms I acted was the highlight of my career. The atmosphere is completely different. You are aware of the fact that me and one of our colleagues in the SCA, female colleagues, started a social group um, where we go out for a quick supper on a Wednesday evening and at 1 p.m. on a Sunday we go for lunch and we are always joined by a number of other colleagues. So, not only professionally, but also socially, do we build onto what you have created at the ECA. 
I, I want to delve deeper in, in, into the question. I, I'm, I'm sure the President Bezzi will have uh, a few questions to put to you on, 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 on the issue of the constitutional imperative of race and, and, and gender. Um, I will open your questioning to the rest of the, of the yes. commissioners. Anyone have questions for the candidate colleagues? Okay. Um, Thank you, Deputy Chief Justice. Good evening, Judge Mayor. Good evening, Acting President Pichi. Well, in your in your brief outline, you have uh, you know dealt with the matters that I had noted. I would. Uh, ask you uh, about uh, your length of service on the bench and that from the April 2019 interview, um, uh, I've had the benefit of reading the transcript. Unless I missed out something, uh, I couldn't see any, there's nothing adverse there. Uh, unless you were to draw my attention to whatever I might have missed in that, in that regard. I don't need to. Thank you. And the fact that uh, you are appearing before this commission for the fourth time now. Yes. But I just have one question which I want to pose to you just to give you an opportunity same question which i posed to the you know to the other candidates and given the constitutional imperative as provided for in section 174 2 what factors would you like the Commission to take into account during the deliberations, which you think would tip the scales in your favor, considering that this time round we have got three white male candidates and two white female candidates. Yes. <clears throat> Acting President Pichi, without repeating myself, I've indicated the experience which I have. I've always been involved in transformation initiatives. Um, I I am meticulous in my work. I write judgments with clarity. As an acting judge many years ago, one of my judgments was overturned by the ECA as a permanent judge for 15 years one was overturned and there are it elicited quite a bit of academic response and after I lodged my application for appointment to the Supreme Court of Appeal in June um, another judgment by the Supreme Court of Appeal came on uh, came out where a full court in which I, a judgment I concurred, um, judgment was also overturned. So I think that indicates the ability I have to review the judgments of other judges and yes, of course, I am a white male, 
and there are currently, I think, four white males in the SCA. But I am aware of the fact that um, Judge Plaskett is retiring at the end of the year. Um, so that in a nutshell is, and I'm very well known, I've got a very good relationship with all my colleagues in the SCA. Um, so that may well tip the skull. Thank you. O on a lighter note, why have I been excluded from your social club? <laughs> but if I may, Acting President, remind you of personally inviting you, but you have other obligations on Sunday afternoons. Thank you, uh, Judge Mayor. Thank you, DCJ. Thank you, Acting President. Any further questions for the candidates? Uh, Prof? Uh, th thank you very much, Deputy Chief Justice. Uh, good evening, Judge. I'm here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to, to, to understand your, your, your general experience at the Supreme Court of Appeal um, in between panels. Uh, does it normally occur to you that there are judges or acting judges generally in panels who struggle to write judgments? Yes. And how generally does or do those who are able to write judgments deal with that? Well, what I always do when I see that there's a judgment that um, can be, let me put it this way, more perfect than it was written, then I always discuss it with my colleague, give my input, and invariably it is highly appreciated. And that is how the system works. And once confidence is built up, then the judgment writing also improves. And since you have acted in that court, have you ever struggled to write a judgment yourself uh, to such an extent that a colleague will come and make substantive comments that lead to the judgment being, or the final product thereof being different from what you initially with my, circulated? With my judgment. With your judgment, yes. Never ever. Oh, okay. There mm. are only cosmetic changes ever made to my judgments. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chief Justice. All right. Commissioner Sabangumdao, I thought your hand was up. Thank you. Thank you, DCJ. Good evening. Uh, I'm here. Judge Mayor. Oh, the <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Commissioner. Mine is simple. It's with regard to your contribution to transformation. I see here it says you, you provided financial support to, to people and you transferred skill to newly qualified advocates. Can you just please speak a bit? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. I, I'm saying it, 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 it's with regard to your contribution in transformation. I see here it said you, you assisted people with finance and you also transfer skill to newly appointed or newly admitted advocates. Did that include black female advocates? Certainly, yes. And if it did, can you boldly say you did a good job? Where are they now? Yes. Are they progressive where they are? Commissioner, you will see I deal with that at length. When I was appointed as a judge in 2007, I was um, nominated by the Johannesburg Bar Council. And in the letter of nomination addressed to this commission, they deal at length with all the transformation initiatives that I was involved in at the Johannesburg Bar 
and in the group in which I was. And we tried to <clears throat> eradicate the type of briefing patterns that there were and also the gender discrimination. My wife is an advocate at the Johannesburg Bar and she herself over the years experienced the gender discrimination that there is against female practitioners. So I've always been involved in initiatives not only for females but also for young starting out black practitioners. For instance, to give you an example, as an advocate, we started an initiative in our group, and I was the vice chair of that group. We, we called it, it was called the Bridge Group, and we, start to, we started this initiative, call, which we called the Bridge Brief. And that is where an attorney sends a brief to the group, which brief is meant for the junior counsel. And then the more senior counsel, the senior juniors and the senior, will then mentor that young advocate and see that a top service is given to that particular uh, client and that in turn resulted in direct briefing to those people. That's one of the examples. Other examples are set out in the letter of the Johannesburg Bar Council which I've quoted actually in the questionnaire at length. And then also on the bench Apart from all the training programs in which I was involved, I also became <clears throat> involved in the South African chapter of the International Association of Women Judges to final year law students at UJ, UNISA and WITS um, from 2018 through to 2020. Um, and that was one of all the programs in which I was involved. Um, that is probably the program that gave me personally the most satisfaction. Um, you as a judge or whoever the mentor is um, are allocated a mentee and you spend about 40 year, hours of the year with that mentee and prior to hearing a case I, my mentee will come to me and I will discuss what the case is all about and after the case, once I've made up my mind, she will come to me and I will hear her views and then I will tell her what my views are and why those are my views. And the satisfaction for me is to see the tremendous talent that we do have in our country and how much such a program assist um, future practitioners. Thank you, Judge. Maybe to take you further, uh, those who, whom you assisted back then, do you still remember any one of them? Can you maybe indicate where are they now? Maybe one or two? Um, you know, I think, yeah, I did. 
in my the record of my previous hearing before this commission in 2019 at page 10 I make specific reference to one of them and last year and I read now from the record and last year in 2018 my mentee was Zinli Medluli and she excelled and that mentorship program involves that you as a judge spends about 40 hours of the year with the mentee and you discuss cases before you hear it with the mentee and then after the case once you have made up your mind you discuss it with the mentee again and so the mentee becomes exposed to exactly how a judge is functioning and that I find extremely exciting you also build up a more long-term relationship with your mentee. The mentee knows that she can contact me whenever and in fact, just as a matter of coincidence, I received an email yesterday afternoon very late from my last year mentee Zindli, in which she tells me that she last Monday obtained her LLB degree and she was on the Dean's list with two certificates of merit forensic medicine and critical jurisprudence and <clears throat> then I quote I thought I would let you know that is what she says to me the good news as the mentorship program certainly contributed to my successful year thank you judge thank you Mr. Chair. Any further questions for the candidate colleagues? Oh, oh sorry, I forgot about you. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, uh, Deputy Chief Justice. Uh, good evening, uh, Justice Mayor. Yes, good evening, Commissioner. Uh, <clears throat> just uh, one uh, aspect from my side uh, that relates to to a matter that you cited as uh, one of the judgments that displays your contribution to, to jurisprudence. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the BLA uh, state that uh, your judgment in uh, United Manganese of Kalahari reveals your ability to grapple uh, with in, in, in tractable commercial transaction. Yes. That is the positive feedback from, yes. from the BLA. <clears throat> of course, uh, <clears throat> uh, it, 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 it's, I'm more interested in trying to, to uh, in trying to understand how you arrived at the uh, interpretation of the uh, a gross sale uh, in terms of section one of the Royalty Act. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, 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 I want to invite you just to sort of uh, 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 explain to me uh, from your from, 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 from your, your 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 contribution. Uh, how did you arrive at the at the uh, a resolution of the impasse between the Commissioner of South African Revenue Service and also the United Manganese around what constitute gross sales in terms of the Royalty Act uh, and what has to be excluded and what has to be included. Thank Commissioner, you, uh, over the years, Thank you. and this really is experience, I've developed the ability to unravel very complex facts and also legal issues and then to apply the law to those facts and that is what assisted me in arriving at that conclusion how I normally go about 
in judgment writing. Many years ago, when I was appointed as a judge, um, now Justice of the Constitutional Court, Matopo, said to me this, and it is so true, it worked for me. Once you've gone through such a body of complex facts and complex legal problems, sit and ask yourself, what is this case really about? And by doing that, clarity comes and eventually the penny drops. Uh, thank you. Just to follow up on that, the the effect on the on the judgment on the ability of uh, SARS uh, to collect, uh, uh, in view of the constraints that uh, our economy is growing going through, didn't you consider that this, to a larger degree, uh, af will affect the, that capacity? Because key to what. Uh, SARS, uh, and the Commission of SARS was saying that uh, uh, was that uh, exclusion of the transport insurance and handling expenditure uh, must only be limited to to the transport insurance handling expenditure invoice to the customer as part of the purchase price. I yes. think that's I think that, that was a, the the main contention of the Commission of SARS. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Commissioner, what I did there is was I applied the now tried principles of interpretation to the statutory document in context and in, in context of the whole act and in context in the broader context. And that is how I got to that conclusion. It is by a application of trite legal principles. But it is a very difficult act and it was a very complex matter. Thank you, uh, Justice Mayor. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chief Justice. Any more questions for Judge Mayor, colleagues, colleagues on the virtual platform? I have a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you. Judge Mayor, um, I'll just want to consider a reading from the um, feedback from one of the organizations. Uh, they'll say that impressive that nine of the ten judgments, top ten judgments, are reported with a team in a recent Supreme Court uh, of Appeal judgment marked as reportable. Is that statistic correct? I beg your pardon, Commissioner. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Is it correct that nine of your of your top ten judgments have been reported and there's a thing that's marked reportable? That is correct. And then the um, that there's about two hundred and sixty published judgments of Safli of yours. Yes. So my, my question to you is this is what would the SCA miss out on if you uh, uh, were not to be appointed? They will miss out on my contribution that I've already given to the jurisprudence of this country and which is still to come because I do have quite a few years left. Um, I'm 61 turning 62 in December and I may remain an active judge until 70 years old. And um, in fact, had that judgment been, well, I was still writing that judgment for the Supreme Court of Appeal when I filed my application for this interview. And that is the judgment of Z versus Z. Um, which will soon be reported and that judgment dealt with the plight of women going through divorces where 
the husbands carry on with their lucrative employment and stop paying maintenance for, say, the 18-year-old son. Invariably, there were many conflicting High Court judgments on that aspect, and um, whether or not a mother has locus standi to sue on behalf of a major child. Now, that leads for what I've mentioned a few absurdities in the judgment, but one of the absurdities is nowadays so many school-going children are already major, 18 years. So, and those children don't want to sue their fathers for maintenance. And eventually, it is the mother that already came second that also try, tries to assist the major child through school or through tertiary college or university. And another absurdity is, say there are two children, for instance, one in grade 11 of 17 years old and one in grade 12 of 18 years old, it means that the mother can sue the father for maintenance on behalf of the one, but the other one must go and sue his father in his own name. So, I love what I do. In fact, I've once, well, I still have the book. The title of the book is The Law is My Master. And that is indeed how I feel and what I will keep on contributing to this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, follow up, sir. Sorry, who's following up? Yes. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, just coin a crisp question, please, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll try, Deputy Chief Justice. But the, the, the judge referred to, to, to a case that has been pro, uh, troubling me in my mind. And I just want to just to, 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 to pick a bra his brain on, on, on the right. judgment. You know, when I read the Z versus Z judgment, um, and I looked at section six, uh, section section six, six one three, yes. and six three of the Divorce Act, and of course the the differing opinions from the High Court. Yeah. Um, and, and, and and I sympathise with the view that you that you took, mm -hmm. but I just want you to understand when you take away the local standing of the child to sue in their own name, because the conflict was that in the High Court, right? Um, and then you allow the mother to sue on behalf of the of the child. Th that makes sense. I mean, the mother can come into Commissioner. I'm glad you asked that question. No, no. I, I'm not, can, can I conclude the yeah, question? So that you you understand the context. Certainly. Yes. Um, the the point I'm having is, the child is over 18, um, and the court is taking their legal standing to sue uh, based on convenience. It's understandable, mm. but. Is it really justifiable um, to, to take the local standing? Or will it be preferable, at least, for the Divorce Act to have deeming provisions for children? Because your, your, main, your, your, your main reasoning is you don't want the child to be, even though it's a dependent child, to be part of the litigation, right? Um, wouldn't it be more sound to have the deeming provisions, which will deem the child as if it's part of the Divorce Act? as part of the, the part of the divorce proceedings, as opposed to taking away their local standing. Yes. Commissioner, one thing that I might clear in that judgment is nothing can ever prevent an adult child of 18 upwards to sue in his or own name. So that child local stand I has not been taken away. In fact, the 
that child was not a party to the proceedings in which the court made the order, which means that that order of the court is only binding between the two spouses, and it is not binding on the child. So the child can always and will always have locus standi to sue in his or her own name. And covered. All right. Um, well, it, it does not appear that there are any more questions for you, Judge uh, Mayor. We owe you an apology. I should have done this before we started uh, questioning you. We kept you waiting for about three hours, I, I think. You should long be home by now. But I just want to make this clear because someone told me that there's a tweet out there that says the JSC running late as, 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 as usual. The JSC was ready to start proceedings at the designated time, 12, but there was a problem with the live stream link that had to be attended by the technician, something totally out of our hands and in control. So we started late and it just got progressively worse as, as time went on. We do apologize for keeping you waiting for the, the, the whole afternoon and I do hope that you'll forgive I us. I appreciate that, Deputy Chief Justice. <clears throat> what I need to tell you also is we call it the holding cell and it is very comfortable in the holding cell <laughs> and there was good company and we talked and we, by doing so, we calmed each other because it is a bit of a stressful experience, yeah. as you know. So you um, did have some fun. So I understand. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Judge. Um, you're excused. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Good evening.